What's up guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're drawing Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta. So let's get right into it. Starting off with the circle, we're going to draw the side of his face and establish direction with a line through the center. It's actually going to be off to his right. You'll notice I'm using a lot of guidelines and this is going to help me connect one side of his jawline to the other and also one side of his forehead to the other. So his eyes are going to come directly downwards on his right side, sharply downwards. And on his left side, we're going to draw the top of his eyelid and we're going to try to measure it and aim it so that it's, it's going to go and line up with the top of his ear. So after looking at that, I think I want his ear to be a little bit higher. So that means we're going to draw his eyebrow pointed higher as well. Since this is Vegeta, make sure to draw his eyes a little bit more narrow than you would with some of the other characters. When drawing the side of his face, make sure the right side of his jaw lines up with his nose. If you draw it too high or too low, it'll mess up the angle of his face. For the mouth, all four sides will be curved. That'll make it appear less boxish. His nose will form a U-shape with his eyebrow, starting off partially flat and then curving out. The bottom of his nose will curve out as well. We'll begin drawing the top of his ear directly past his eyebrow. We have to be careful not to make the shape of his hairline look too round, so we'll square it off at the top and try to include as many other angles as we can. Now we'll add some details to his face so he gives off a stern expression. Let's go ahead and draw the lines beneath his eyes. For now we're just going to draw one line as a placeholder and later on during the penning process I'll draw three lines. Each almost directly on top of the other. Now we can get to work on his body and since he's flying towards us we're only going to see the top of his chest. So we're going to start drawing his armor directly to the side of his chin. I went back to work on the mouth because I wasn't happy with the shape, but it turns out I had it right the first time and I ended up just messing it up a little bit. This might be a common theme for a lot of people. Try not to obsess too much over microscopic mistakes. His hair in this form should be pretty easy to draw, and most of the spikes follow a predictable pattern. We're not going to draw any lines through his hair, we'll get to that once we start the coloring process. Alright cool, that wasn't too hard. Now let's get to work on his legs. This part shouldn't be too hard either.
This drawing is pretty low in difficulty because you don't have to draw most of his body. But I chose this one to draw over the other ones because for Super Saiyan Evolution Vegeta, it's mostly just him standing there powering up or him just a generic pose except with slider, slightly lighter blue color. So with this pose, at least it gives us a little bit of a different angle to draw him at and makes the drawing a bit more interesting. Sorry about covering the sketch with my hand. This is a bad habit that I've been trying to break recently. Now let's get to work on his ear. Normally I'd just draw an S shape and I'd call it a night, but we have to make up for the lack of detail in the rest of his body and try to make his ear look a bit more interesting and realistic, so we'll add a bit, quite a bit more detail here. Now let's go ahead and finish drawing the armor. Let's get to work on the teeth. Since he's looking downward, on the top we're only going to see one row of teeth, but on the bottom we're going to see all three rows. So I'm not going to show me doing the penning process because it's kind of pointless. I'll just go ahead and take you to after the process is over. And we're done drawing over everything with a pen, so let's go ahead and start the coloring process. We'll start with B21 to color everything his eyebrows, his eyes, and his hair. Next we'll go over the shadows with a darker blue, B24. I also left a small bubble within his pupils in order to show the reflection of the light bouncing off of his eyes. You might notice that the edges along this darker blue are not very sharp. They look a bit dull and plain. So we're going to sharpen the edges in a second with a blue color pencil. After going over it with a color pencil, his hair looks much sharper and much cleaner. Next we're going to use a white color pencil to go over the edges of his hair in order to give off a reflection from the light. It may not appear to make much of a difference, but it will still give his hair a bit more depth and contrast, which will make our drawing look more interesting. Now let's go over his legs, his arm, and his chest with a darker blue and one of the blues that we used earlier on his hair. After we're done coloring, you can go over the darker portions with a blue color pencil if you like to make it sharper, but it's not really necessary with his body parts like it is with his hair. You don't have to make it that sharp. Actually, it may make it more interesting if you just blend the colors together. When you're using these Copic markers, be sure to test them out on a piece of paper before you start using them on your drawing. Not just to make sure the colors match correctly, but also to know which one of your markers is going to bleed out and which one is not. If it's bleeding out, it's going to absorb too much into your, into your paper and it's going to go over the place. You don't want your blues mixing with the skin pigment, for example. 
So try your best to avoid those ones. And if you have to use them, make sure you use the bristle brush on the back side because it's not going to bleed out as much. Finding the right markers for a skin pigment is always a challenge. But for this drawing, I decided to play it safe and just go with some of the lighter colors. Now let's go ahead and draw his aura around his body. We'll do a rough sketch first before we start coloring. Also sorry about the light show, I really have to fix my lighting setup. This is a perfect example of how a marker bleeding out could just destroy your drawing. So in this case it was my lighter pink and it just bled into his teeth like crazy and made, made, it, made it look like, I don't know, he's got pink teeth. So. I'm going to fix that in a little bit um, after the drawing is over by going over it with some chalk and it's really going to do a lot to reduce the coloring. So stick around for the image at the end and it's going to look a lot better than this. Now we're finally in the home stretch. The only thing left to do is to color the grays on his armor and on his glove and then we'll fit in some final detail with a pen. I was going to add a bit more ink to his hair as well, but then I decided to just go through the darker portions with the dark blue instead. And we're pretty much done, so let's go ahead and take a look at the final product. Alright guys, and that is it. I ended up using a white marker on his teeth and that helped a lot. White markers are great to have in case you have mistakes like that. Alright guys, that's it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.